The following NBC Sports program is brought to you in living color. 25-game winner Tom Seaver, the New York Mets, failed to win his first series start. He was beaten by this left-hander of Baltimore, Mike Cuellar. And today they meet again in the fourth game of the 1969 World Series. I'm Jim Simpson with Sandy Koufax and Mickey Mantle. And gentlemen, I don't know whether to sit here and smile or just break down and cry. <laughs> As experts, you've done a whale of a job. Baltimore, you said, on Sunday. Baltimore, you said, yesterday. And here are the Mets leading two games to one. I think they bought us these red jackets to uh, kind of cover up our red faces. I don't think it's doing too good a job myself. <laughs> well, Sandy, what's going I on? hope the weatherman's a lot writer about these ball games than we've been. Uh, I don't think Baltimore could have two worse enemies than us two for picking them. The experts now say, so we got to, let's cover ourselves. The experts now say the Mets will win, but they weren't saying it before. The series, I mean. Well, I'm sort of glad that uh, I picked uh, the Mets for today, yesterday. That way I don't feel like I'm a front runner if I say it today. Well, we could spend a lot of time apologizing, but let's forget it. Let's be the experts again today and talk about yesterday and talk about what's coming up today as we'll return with more World Series report right after this message. There you are, walking along, and suddenly... Mm, must have been something you ate. You've got a glass stomach, heartburn, acid indigestion. Now, plain antacid tablets will correct the acid, but antacid alone cannot break the bubbles that trap the gas. Here's where Digel comes in. Digel is a unique two-layer tablet. One layer antacid, the other cymethicone. Cymethicone dissolves and breaks the bubbles and relieves the pressure. Ah, that's better. Digel, the two-way tablet. Two ways to relief. When you eat too well, take Digel. Sandy, pitching is the name of the game, and uh, Gary Gentry, we said yesterday, had great stuff, but we felt that uh, Jim Palmer was more overpowering. Not yesterday. Definitely not. Uh, both Mickey and I, I think, were a little guilty of looking at Palmer and what he had done against us. Uh, Mickey remembers hitting against him and having his troubles. I remember seeing him in a World Series a couple of years ago when he shut us out. I was a pitcher that day, so I had... A lot of respect for him. Gentry, uh, I have a lot of respect for. I didn't realize he threw quite that hard. I don't think Baltimore did either. Uh, Gary pitched a great ball game. He had a good fast ball and curve ball, and he had great control. The only thing that happened to him, he got a little tired. Uh, he hadn't completed very many ball games all year. I believe he only completed six games out of 35 starts. So there was sort of this feeling that he might not finish it, but... You've got a fellow like Nolan Ryan in the bullpen, and he does throw as hard as everybody knows. And he came in with the bases loaded in the seventh inning, and with the help of Tommy Agee's great catch, got out of that inning and pitched great baseball uh, until the ninth. And the ninth inning got into a little bit of trouble on his own. He got the bases loaded. With two out, he had Blair at the plate again and threw Blair two great fastballs and had him well set up. And then on the two-strike count, threw him a curveball, Blair just looking fastball, just stood there, couldn't even swing at it, took it for strike three, and the Mets were out on the field, and it didn't even resemble what uh, was possibly called the dead Mets of the first game. They looked great. Well, one more thing about Gentry was his hitting. He's got that double on a fastball from Palmer that drove in the second and third runs of the ball game. But Mickey, here in New York, and you played a lot of center field, and uh, I know that when they looked at Tommy Agee, they're thinking Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays and others. But if you talk in New York, if you listen to New York today, you keep hearing the name Tommy Agee. Well, I think so far, as far as I'm concerned, it's been the, uh, especially yesterday, it was the story of the game. I thought it was, uh, most uh, good baseball people will tell you that you have to have a guy in center field that can make those plays, and uh, Tommy Agee uh, has certainly shown me that he can make them. I, I think those were two of the best plays I've ever seen. And... Uh, the first time up was against uh, Elrod Hendricks, as a left-handed uh, hitter. He's playing him in uh, left center and uh, or right center, and the uh, ball's hit plumb over in left center, and he catches it. 
And then uh, I think that probably uh, the hardest thing about that play was is where he was playing. I know in your uh, scattering reports sometime when you get a uh, scouting report, they'll tell you that this guy will never hit a ball over there, but he sure hit this one. <laughs> and that's about as far as a guy can run and catch a ball because he hit the fence just as soon as he caught it. Look at the white, of what we say the white is showing in baseball. In other words, it looks like the ball is sitting right up there on top of his glove or perhaps even went through. Well, when I first saw that play, I thought the ball did stick on the outside of his glove, but uh, it was stuck in his webbing. Uh, and it looked like it almost came all the way through the webbing. He said uh, after the game that Tommy Seaver usually checks his glove for him. He says, I'm sure when he pitches tomorrow, meaning today, he'll really check it. He said, but the webbing was actually a little loose, and there was a danger of the ball actually falling through. Now, Sandy brought up the fact that in the seventh inning of the game, when uh, Gentry was getting a little tired, he had the bases loaded, on came Nolan Ryan, and Ryan retired Paul Blair, but boy, what a way he retired him as A.G. came again and saved another three runs with a great catch. He did, and again, that was uh, on a, a Paul Blair is supposed to be a left-handed pull hitter, and he hits this ball in right center. I think that uh, Tommy kind of misjudged that ball a little bit. It was a great catch when it was the way it turned out and everything, but I thought it, uh, he could have probably have gotten there a little bit sooner. When you see an outfielder tap his glove like that when he's running, he thinks he has it. Well, and you know, it's a funny thing, not to interrupt, but... Uh, as we'll watch it again in slow motion, and I'll see him tap his glove here a couple of times. A.G. said that this was not the best catch of the two. Oh, it's, a, it's a great catch the way it turned out because uh, he had to finally run and dive at it. But I think that he, uh, he lost uh, a little bit of uh, the wind or the currents out mm -hmm. in Shea Stadium, kind of took that ball away from him a little bit farther than he thought. Well, he also had the home run. A.G. had a great day. The Mets had a great day. They lead two games to one. Tom Seaver, Mike Cuellar, get those blushes ready, gentlemen. You've got to do some more predicting. We'll be back in just a moment with more World Series report after this message. This is Gatorade, the greatest thirst quencher ever made. Says who? Says the New York Yankees, the Minnesota Twins, the Cincinnati Reds, the Detroit Tigers, the Chicago White Sox, the Oakland Athletics, Fact is, Gatorade has become the official thirst quencher of baseball. And, oh yes, the Main Street Hawks say it tastes so good it makes you glad you get thirsty. Gatorade, the big thirst quencher. This is how to get shaped up and enjoy it. Even my cigar is shaped up. It's the new Dutch Masters Elite, the fat-free cigar. What a physique, trim and taut, with that mild Dutch Masters taste. New Elite, the fat-free cigar. Oh, what a way to get great shape and enjoy yourself at the same time. Try Elite, a slimline cigar from Dutch Masters. Next. Gentlemen, before we go ahead to the fourth game today at Shea Stadium, let us go back to our first show last Saturday. At that time, Mike Cuellar was going against Tom Seaver. Drag out your expertise from then Saturday. And Mickey Mantle was saying, I think one of the real comers in the American League is Don Buford, and it turned out that way. Think Buford's going to have the same kind of day today against Seaver? Well, I hope so. I, uh, I feel kind of silly sitting here trying to predict anything <laughs> right now after what's happened. But uh, I look for Buford to uh, come back a little bit today. I look for the whole Baltimore team to come back today. I think that they're... Uh, They've gone just about as far as they can afford to go. They're going to, if they're going to do it, they're going to have to do it right now. Six singles in the last two days is all that the Baltimore hitting has had, Mickey. And not only that, uh, the Robinsons, Brooks and Frank, and Boog Powell and Paul Blair only have six hits among them, and three of those are by Boog Powell. Well, Boog's been hitting the ball very good. Uh, the game against Kuzman, Boog hit a couple of balls right on the nose, but it's right at someone. But... Uh, I, I look for him to uh, start uh, bleeding a couple of hits in somewhere along the line. I remember you yesterday, Sandy, for let's forget last Saturday, yesterday saying that Tom Seaver is due for a gem of a game and you were predicting that he would have it today. Jim, I, I just feel this way. I, I think the Mets are again getting their other lineup, the right-hand hitting lineup into the order. I, I like the club that played better yesterday, but uh, I feel that Tom Seaver, whether he admits it or not, he said it didn't bother him, but the oh, being over-rested, having a week between starts, hurts a pitcher. Uh, I don't think Tom, being the kind of guy he is, w wants to use that as an excuse. But I've got to feel that that hurt him. 
He's too good a pitcher to pitch the two ball games he pitched, one in the playoffs and one against Baltimore. And I just feel somebody's going to find out very shortly just how good a pitcher he is, and I think it's going to be today. Well, let's not forget Mike Cuellar, who won that first game, pitched excellent ball. And I don't know if this is a factor or not, but it's cool in New York today, and Cuellar had a warm day Saturday and likes the warmth. Think it'll affect him or not? Well, I think... Uh, the heat sometimes will bother a pitcher. There are some pitchers that like warmer weather. Uh, Cuellar possibly being one of them, I really don't know. But I also feel that there aren't that many screwball pitchers in the major leagues. And I think sometimes the first time a club sees one, it's even more difficult than it is normally. I don't think Cuellar is a flash in the pan and he can only win one ball game. But uh, the Mets have seen him and know him pretty well now, and uh, it's not a question of that. To me, it's Tom Seaver. Well, let me ask you another question about Cuellar, though, about the screwball. We described it last Saturday very briefly, since it'll be all right-handers, probably none of them today for the Mets, and Cuellar's a left-handed pitcher to them. What does the screwball do again? Well, it will break it down and away from a right-hand hitter, uh, much in the way that a right-hander's curveball will, probably. Not as quickly and not as big, but Mickey, being a switch hitter, never had to look at that kind of pitch. <laughs> Gentlemen, get out your flags of truce. Or get out your expertise or get out your rabbit's feet or something, because you've got to make a prediction in just a moment. We'll return with those predictions right after this message. The minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction. Join the Muriel Mile crowd. Pick one up and smoke it sometime. Hi, Molly, what? And boy, am I ever thirsty. Okay, Mr. Triple Threat, what's it gonna be? Are you kidding, Mom? Gatorade. Gatorade's with the pro strength. And it's sure great when you're thirsty. Jimmy, if you keep this up, I'm gonna need a big refrigerator just for the Gatorade. Fill her up, Mom. Gatorade tastes so good, it makes you glad you get thirsty. Gatorade, the big thirst quencher for active people. I'm of the opinion, Sandy, that you're Tom Seaver and the Mets today. First time. Yes, it is your first time. The only thing I'm worried about, uh, yesterday, I think every Met fan in New York came up to me and said, do me a favor, don't pick them. Oh, you know, oh, really? <laughs> they're so confident of our picks, <laughs> they, I think they feel that we've got a jinx on anybody. But I've got to say that... Uh, Tom Seaver's just too good a pitcher, and I feel like he's going to have a great ball game. All right, Mickey. Baltimore and Buford, or are you going with the Mets? Well, I'm going to stick with Cuellar. Uh, he threw 72 screwballs the other day, I think, and they didn't hurt him too bad. So if he can uh, get 72 more of them over today, why, I think the Baltimore's still in there. I wonder if anybody knows we're hedging our bets. <laughs> we go on each way. We can't be all wrong, can we? Jim Simpson with Mickey Mantle and Sandy Koufax, and stay tuned now for the fourth game of the 1969 World Series. Bronson meets a matador involving both men in a daring and unusual challenge tonight. Well, it's, a, just a good, it's just a good thing that we were off camera. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, can you? I think it was a great show. You want to come up to the...
NBC Sports presents the fourth game of the 1969 World Series. The Baltimore Orioles versus the New York Mets from Shea Stadium in New York City. Brought to you by the Hartford Insurance Group and Hartford agents and brokers everywhere. By Gillette, we have a new adjustable razor for a more comfortable shave. And by Chrysler Corporation, engineering with care. Your host for today, your local Dodge dealer. Once again, off the Flushing subway, from the highways, and nearby LaGuardia Airport, crowd streaming in the Met Stadium. This is the coolest day of uh, the four games we've had for the World Series. The temperature in New York right now is 67, but it's a brilliant, sunshiny day. And everybody's set now to see if the Mets are going to take a commanding lead or if the Orioles are going to come back and square the World Series at two games apiece. I'm Kurt Gowdy of NBC, Lindsey Nelson, the broadcaster of the New York Mets, and roaming the stands again will be my game of the week sidekick, Tony Kubek. Well, so far, the Mets lead on almost unbelievable fielding, but they've been a sound defensive team all year, and it's a question of whether you think the Orioles are in a team batting slump or the Mets pitchers have been overpowering. The Orioles now have scored only one run in the last two games, and have been held at just 12 hits in the three games. Neither team has exactly torn the cover off the ball. There have been only 30 hits by the two teams in the series, and one of them could break out today. The pitchers for the Orioles will be Mike Cuellar, who won the opening game of the series, a 23-game winner during the year. He's coming back for three days rest, but he did. This was his regular schedule during the season. He doesn't need four days. Going for the Mets will be the winningest pitcher in the major leagues, Tom Seaver, who won 25, but who has been ineffective in his last two starts against Atlanta in the National League Championship Series, and in the first game, he was a loser against the Baltimore Orioles. Now, to set you up further on game four and to take you around his home park here at Shea Stadium, let's swing over to Lindsey Nelson. But first, Lindsey, let's look at those two great catches yesterday. Tom Agee playing over in right center. This is off the bat of Ellie Hendricks. Many call this one of the best catches in World Series history. A.G. says this was his hardest one. His manager, Gil Hodges, disagrees with him. He thought the second catch with the bases loaded off the bat of Paul Blair was a more difficult catch. And notice how that white of the ball is still showing. Now, here's his second one. A.G. said he thought he had it all the way, tapped his glove, then the wind suddenly blew it away from him. And he has to dive and skid to hold on to it. Now, this town's seen some great center fielding and Joe DiMaggio and Willie Mays, but probably never in a World Series game have there been two such catches made by one player. And those two catches, by the way, saved five runs for the New York Mets. And right now, Mr. Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Kurt Gowdy, and hello again, everybody. It's the second time around with Cuellar against Seaver, and this is an indicative game in the World Series because if the Orioles win it, they're all even with the knowledge they'll be going back to their home park in Baltimore. If the Mets win it, they'll be leading three games to one with the knowledge they have one more to play in their home park here at Shea Stadium. It is a bright, beautiful day here at Shea down the left field line to the corner. It's 341 feet, and it is 358 to the transparent fence in front of the bullpen, 371 up the power alley, 396 to left center, 410 to straightaway center field. And then moving on around, it's 396 again, symmetrical, 371 in front of the scoreboard, 358 in front of the transparent fence in front of the Met bullpen, and 341 down to the right field corner. At this moment, the Armed Forces color guard is on the field. And today, the Baltimore Orioles are playing the very same batting order and lineup that they played yesterday, with the exception of Mike Cuellar, and the New York Mets are going back to their right-hand batting order, the one that they used for the two games played in Baltimore. So that's the scene here at Shea Stadium. And once again, here's Kurt Gowdy. All right, Lindsay, now we're going to have the starting lineups announced and presented to the crowd and to the national television audience here at Shea Stadium. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
Welcome to Shea Stadium for the fourth game of the 1969 World Series. Here are the official lineups. First, the Baltimore Orioles. Here is the manager of the Orioles, number four, Earl Weaver. Batting first, playing left field, number nine, Don Buford. Batting second, playing center field, number six, Paul Blair. Batting third, playing right field, number 20, Frank Robinson. Batting fourth, playing first base, number 26, John Powell. Batting fifth, playing third base, number five, Brooks Robinson. Batting sixth, catching, number 10, Elrod Hendricks. Batting seventh, playing second base, number 15, Dave Johnson. Batting eighth, playing shortstop, number seven, Mark. Bellanger. Batting ninth. Pitching for the Orioles. Warming up. Adjacent to home plate. Number 35. Mike Cuellar. Here are the remaining players and coaches of the Baltimore Orioles. Here's the manager of the Mets, number 14, Gil Hodges. Batting first, playing center field, number 20, Tommy A.G. Batting second, playing shortstop, number three. Bud Harrelson. Batting third. Playing left field. Number 21. Cleon Jones. Batting fourth. Playing first base. Number 22. Don Quendenon. Batting fifth. Playing right field. Number four. Ron Swoboda. Batting sixth, playing third base. Number five, Ed Charles. Batting seventh, catching. Number 15, Jerry Grody. Batting eighth, playing second base. Number six, Al Weiss. Batting ninth. Pitching, warming up for the Mets bullpen, number 14, Tom, number 41, Tom Saber. Here are the remaining players and coaches of the New York Mets. you to please rise for our national anthem, which will be sung by the famous TV and recording star, Mr. Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you very much. We don't have an orchestra today, so I have to sing this, the national anthem, uh, what they call a cappella, which means alone. But the way you sang it yesterday, I won't be alone. I've lowered the key 
So let's show the country how the Met fans can sing our national anthem. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night o'er the ramparts we watched were. game of the 1969 World Series being brought to you from New York as the Orioles meet the Mets. briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. <laughs> Most of you may have read there's been a moratorium declared here by Mayor Lindsay in New York today. We did not have the band for the national anthem, but we'll read you a statement from the commissioner of baseball. Right now we're going to the commissioner's box. Casey Stengel, who won seven world championships in 10 years with the Mets, the original Met manager who really established the image of the Mets there in New York. And of course, one of the most colorful men in the history of the game has the honor of throwing out the first ball. Barry Grody taking the toss. Originally, the flag was going to be at half mast today, but I'm quoting this statement from Bowie Kuhn after a consultation with interested parties, including involved military personnel, the mayor of New York. I've decided to fly the Shea Stadium flag at full staff today. The Mets take the field. They're leading in the World Series, two games to one. Young Tom Seaver has been warming up out in the Met bullpen. He's now in the dugout. Very shortly he's coming out, and now to set you up, the Mets defensively and take over for the play-by-play, -play, Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Kurt Gardner. That's Don Clinton on at first base for the Mets. Al Weiss is at second. Bud Harrelson, the shortstop. And Ed Charles around at third. Leon Jones is in left field. Tommy Agee, yesterday's hero in center field. 
And Ron Swoboda is around and right. Jerry Grody again is the Met catcher. And Tom Seaver has not yet come out onto the field. As Kurt Gotti indicated, he had been warming up down in the bullpen area. Seaver getting his second start as we're to the point where we're going the second time around in pitching assignments. Play our opposed Seaver in the opening game Saturday in Baltimore. The game won by the Baltimore Orioles by a score of four to one. Mrs. Casey Single is being escorted. There's Edna getting a handshake from the commissioner of baseball. And Casey Stingle there, and perhaps you saw when he was standing and uh, sitting just now over to the right is Joe DiMaggio, who played for Casey when he was winning those pennants for the New York Yankees. Now, Seaver runs out to the mound. Baseball's winningest pitcher this year, the winningest pitcher in the major leagues with 25 victories. He was the losing pitcher in the opening game last Saturday. He has been disappointing his last two times out, both in the championship series against the Atlanta Braves, in which he did get the victory, and against the Baltimore Orioles, the game in which he took the loss. He was 25-7 and seven with a 2-2-1 earned run average. Tom Seaver. It's a little crisp here today, and we were talking to Seaver before the ball game. He was saying it's a little bit like the weather at Fairbanks, Alaska, when he played for the Alaska Gold Panners, which he did along with Kurt Moten, who is a member of the squad of these Baltimore Orioles. The Mets are putting their hopes on a return to form of Tom Seaver in this afternoon's ball game. You know, Lindsay, uh, we noticed when the Orioles were introduced a much more determined looking team when they went to the foul lines today. Uh, they're grim and uh, they know now uh, this is it. They've Play got to get moving here in this series. This is indeed a pivotal game in the World Series. And Don Buford's coming up. Keep in mind that in Baltimore, on the second pitch thrown by Tom Seaver, Buford hit it out for a home run. Don Buford hit 291 during the regular American League season. He is two for 11 so far in the World Series. He's had one home run and two runs better than Seaver's first pitch. And it's in there for a cross strike for Don Buford. That's Paul Blair on deck. Both Buford and Seaver opposing each other right here played college baseball at the University of Southern California. Buford came to the Orioles from the Chicago White Sox. A change up. Short hopped into Grody. The, um, the third baseman is Ed Charles in on the grass there against the speed of Don Buford. That's in for a call strike. It's one and two. Seaver facing Buford. Seaver has a fastball, good slider, breaking pitch, and has thrown more change-ups this year than ever before. And he's been followed by the remainder of the Mets staff in that regard. Breaking pitch, and it's a little low. It's 2-2. Two -two. The turn throw gets away. The umpire behind the plate is Shag Crawford of the National League calling balls and strikes, and you will note that he works extremely close to the catcher. He's having a word there with Grody at the moment. Not as close as he once did, but still very close. Fouled off and out of play. We were talking to Shag Crawford before the start of today's ball game. He has never worked behind Ellie Hendricks, of course. And he said that before the game now, he would say to Ellie, I do work extremely close. Don't let it worry you, because with runners on base, I'll move back a little. But he gets right up there. Swing and a miss. Seaver gets a strike up. Starting in the second position. Center and that Miller. brings up Paul Blair. Number six. The umpire, Shag Crawford, behind Blair. the plate. He's from the National Number League. Six. Lou DeMiro of the American League at first, Big Lee Wire of the National League at second, Hike Soar of the American League at third, Frank Sikori of the National League down the left field line, Larry Knapp of the American League down the right field line. Pitch to Paul Blair. In there for a called strike. Blair hit 285 during the American League season. He is one for 11 so far in World Series play this year. Breaking pitch low and away, it's 1-1. Fastball and a 
it's one and two now. Gil Hodges felt, hopefully, that Seaver would be sharp today as he was during the regular season because of the fact that he's pitching in his regular turn now. After having pitched last Saturday, this would be his regular turn. After the Mets clinched the championship in the Eastern Division, he did not work in regular turn, and there's some feeling that that might have affected his work. Low, it's 2-2. Two -two. Seaver is 24 years of age. Born in Fresno, California. Gil Hodges wearing the jacket here at Shea today. There is a base hit for Paul Blair in the center field. A.G. up with it, returns it. Blair turns and holds with a single to center of the first base hit of the ball game. Back Next in the coach George Stoller at first base. Number 20, Frank. And now Frank Robinson. Robinson. At a 308 during the American League season, Robinson is one for nine during this World Series. The coach at third at the left of your screen is Billy Hunter, and George Stoller is the coach at first at the bottom of your screen. Swing and a miss. Strike one to Frank Robinson. Robinson, one of baseball superstars. Players back safely. about the black under the eyes, the slant black, but in there to knock the glare of the sun. And we have a light sky today, no clouds, and a very bright sun. Two men out, runner at first. Top half of the first inning, no score. Severs pitch is fouled out to the left side, out of play for strike one. Oddly enough, this was the only year that the Mets and Orioles did not meet in exhibition play in the spring. They have met in every other season except this one. back inside with the fastball. It's 1-1. One, one. Breaking pitch is fouled off. Change speed is 1-2. and two. Safely, Paul Blair, two men out. It's high for a ball. Yesterday, we didn't hear much of the air traffic in and out of LaGuardia because of the direction of the wind. However, today, they are using the runway nearest to this ballpark, so you're likely to hear the noise of jet planes throughout the afternoon. This will be a 2-2 pitch to Powell. And it's in there for a call strike three. Struck him out. Two strikeouts for Seaver in the inning. The side is retired with no runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. In the middle of the first inning, the score is Baltimore nothing and the Mets coming to bat.
foul at first base. Dave Robinson is at second. Mark Palanger is the shortstop. And Brooks Robinson is at third. Don Buford has not put in an appearance yet in left field, so we are awaiting his appearance. Paul Blair is in center. And Frank Robinson is in right. The catcher is Ellie Hendricks. And the pitcher is Mike Cuellar. He is 32 years of age. He was the winningest left-hander in the major leagues this year with 23 victories. He was the winning pitcher for the Orioles last Saturday over the Mets when the score was 4-1. to one. Went 23, lost 11. The earned run average 2.38. Born in Santa Clara, Cuba. Now, Buford starts, comes back. the manager moving down to the end of the dugout to see what is the problem with his left fielder. Apparently he has a knee bandage that was not comfortable and he is uh, readjusting it there. You saw him reach down and uh, start moving that knee around. He's not satisfied with it yet. Got it now. The umpire there is Shag Crawford. It appears to be more than just the bandage that was bothering. Apparently, it's the knee that was bothering him. Listen to the ovation Mike Tommy Agee gets now with this PA announcement. Tommy Lindsay Earl Weaver standing on the steps of the Baltimore dugout watching Buford for any signs that he may not be able to go at full speed out there. A.G. the hero yesterday led off with a home run for the New York Mets. Here's a breaking pitch in there for a call strike. Now, in his victory last Saturday, there's Earl Weaver in the dugout of the Baltimore Orioles. Play our last Saturday through 60 to 70 percent screwballs. It's his big pitch. And away, it's 1-1. A.G. hit 271 during the regular season. He's had only one hit in this World Series, but it was a big one. A leadoff home run yesterday. Breaking pitch it on the ground to third. Brooks Robinson with a big hop. Cross to Boog Powell, and A.G. is out. That will bring up the men's shortstop, Bud Harrelson, who is a switch hitter. Point shortstop, number three. He is two for nine in the World Series so far. Number three. A beautiful October afternoon in New York. Shea Stadium packed and jammed. For this, the fourth game of the 1969 World Series. Run it foul. Out of play. Harrelson trying to run his way on. Harrelson had a knee operation last September 24th. His knee had bothered him throughout the season, and so before the end of the year, he submitted to surgery. Got a late start in spring training and then had a great season for the New York Mets. Outside, 1-1. One, one. Cuellar has worked here at Shea Stadium before, of course, when he was in the National League. That's a little low for a ball. He worked here last on August 18th, 1968, and lost 8 to 1. This is a foul ball. It's back and out of play. This game is authorized under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. 
Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game, without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball, is prohibited. There's a base hit. In the left field, Buford comes up with it. Harrelson turns and holds with the first net first hook. A single on left. He checks in with Yogi Berra. Leon Jones is the batter. Jones batted 340 during the National League season. He led the National League at that for much of the year. In this World Series, he's had one hit. He is one for 12. Now the Mets fans start a chant of let's go Mets. And for a call strike. Looking out the center, we still see Paul Blair playing a fairly shallow center field against these men. We talked to him about that before the game, Fred. He said that the background did not bother him as it has bothered many center fielders. Harrelson's back safely. Cuellar's record against the Mets was no wins and two losses. One of those was a one nothing loss to Tom Seaver. It was at Houston on June 20th. Ground ball is short. Belanger to Johnson for one. The throw on and a double play. 6-4-3 if you're scoring and the side is retired. With no runs, a hit, no errors, and none left. And at the end of an inning, the score is Baltimore nothing, the Mets nothing. At 11.30, 10.30 Central Time, NBC News presents a day in October. What does it mean? A 90-minute program evaluating today's Vietnam moratorium. Frank McGee, John Chancellor, and Ed Newman will join other NBC correspondents and spokesmen from the conflicting viewpoints. Tonight at 11.30, 10.30 Central Time, here on NBC. Brooks Robinson up to lead off for the Orioles in the second. Tom Seaver's pitch in there for a call strike. Robinson hit 234 during the regular American League season. He's one for 12 in this World Series. He has batted in one run. Outside for a ball. One and one. This franchise was moved from St. Louis to Baltimore in 1954. That's Ellie Hendricks on deck. Swing a foul ball back and out of play. In St. Louis, this Oriole franchise was known as the St. Louis Browns. And in many respects, they were the Mets of their day, the early day Mets. So we have, in effect, the one-time St. Louis Browns playing the New York Mets for the championship of the world. Shortstop, one hop, taken by Harrelson across to Don Clendenin. Brooks Robinson's out. One away, and it'll bring up Ellie Hendricks. Batting in the sixth position. Catcher, number 10. Hendricks played nine years of minor league baseball, including three years in Mexico. They like to have him catch Cuellar because of the fact that both speak Spanish. They think that gives him a little closer affinity. Change up. 
and away and it's ball one. One of the reasons for Agee's first great catch was this fella Hendricks. The Mets are playing him to right and that's the book on him and they had to go in the left center to get the ball. Swing in the middle. One one. Hendricks said before the ball game he doesn't recall ever hitting a ball any harder to that field than he did yesterday. The book on him says he's a line drive hitter that may hit it over the right field fence for you. Foul out. One and two. That's Dave Johnson on deck. Side low. Two two. Low and the count is full at three and two. Baltimore nothing, the Mets nothing in the top of the second. Shea Stadium in New York. Here's a payoff pitch. And he walked him. First walk issued by Seaver. The Orioles, their second base runner. Second base, right? Number 15. Dave Johnson coming up. Dave Johnson. Number 15. Johnson hit 280 during the American League season. He has gone 0 for 8 so far in this World Series. Short Harrelson goes back to Weiss and the relay to first. Not in time. He beats the relay despite the big stretch by Don Clendenin. So the force play makes it two away, and Mark Belanger will be coming up. He tried to pull that ball. It was an outside pitch. Batting in the eighth position. Big hop. George Harrelson Tuck. gets rid of it quickly. Number seven. Johnson Four. went down the line, got a Belanger. good break from home plate. Number seven. And uh, going in there hard, of course, with Hendricks to help bother the throw. But Johnson across and safe. Mark Belanger hit 287 this year during the regular season. He's one for eight in this World Series. Severs pitches low for a ball. Strike. This past year, Belanger's average went from 208 to 287. Down the right field line, Swoboda racing after it and gets in foul territory. It's out of play. If we watch Belanger, this is. Davy Johnson going back to first, who's all around the third. If you watch him with a bat, you'll see how he's choked up in the handle. He's closed his stance up. He's trying to wait later, and he's trying to hit down on the ball. Charlie Lau, the batting coach of the Orioles, gave him those tips. He put him to good practice, and that's the reason he raised his average those 80 points. Watch how he chokes up now. He has a count of one ball and two strikes. There are two men out with a runner at first. There's no score in the game. And the pitch is high. Grody's throw to Harrelson, and he's out. This is Johnson going. He's going against a strong arm in Jerry Grody. It was a high throw, but had enough on it. Harrelson down there and let the runner tag himself out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. And in the middle of the second inning, it's Baltimore nothing and the Mets nothing.
and I were just chatting here about Jerry Grody. Gil Hodges said his arm is just a shade behind Johnny Bench's, Lindsay. The coaches now, Eddie Yost at third for the Mets, and Yogi Berra on the lines at first. And Don Clendenin is up to lead off, facing screwballer Mike Cuellar. Swinging a foul ball off and out of play. Clendenin was the only Met to get two hits off Cuellar in the first game. He had a double and a single and struck out twice and four times at bat. Clendenin hit 248 during the National League season, and in this World Series, he's three for seven. He's had one home run and one run batted in. That's in for a call strike. 0 oh and 2 now to Clendenin. Inside low. Miss Lowen away, so it's two two. It's out full at 3 2 now to Clendenin. This will be a payoff pitch from Cuellar to Clendenin. Uh, either a screwball or a breaking pitch it didn't act up right out over the plate for him when Denon full power behind it and lashed that one right out and Ron Svoboda's up and the pitch is high and away for a ball Svoboda during the season hit 235 he's one for seven in the World Series he said against the screwball he might very well try to take it to right field today It's high and away for a ball, 2-0. Oh. Cuellar changes speed with that screwball. Ground ball to deep short. Big hop for Belangia. Long throw across to Powell, and Swoboda's out. One away. And now, Ed Charles, whom the Mets affectionately call the grand old man of the New York Mets at age 36. Ed Charles. Charles, so he finally made the World Series in his 18th year of professional baseball. Foul back and out of play. The fourth game of the World Series is being brought to you in living color on NBC. And for those of you who can't take a three-hour lunch and watch the game, you can listen to the game back in the office on NBC Radio with Jim Simpson and Bill O'Donnell. One and one. Jerry Grody is on deck. One-one delivery. One hop to short. Belanger across to Boog Powell and Charles is out. Two away. These last two outs, the Mets have hit the ball sharply, hard, right at the line there, and they're putting more wood on the ball than they did in the opening game they faced play on. Jerry Brody hit 252 for the season, one for four in this World Series. For four in this World Series. Swing and a miss, strike one. Oh. 
low for a ball. It's one and one to Jerry Grody. He checked, took it low. It's two and one. Boyar came up to Cincinnati in 1959 in the National League, went over to the Cardinals in 64. He was traded with Ron Taylor to Houston on June 15, 1965. Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two -two. And last December, Baltimore made a deal with Houston. Boyar with infielder Tom Johnson for Kurt Bleffery. Fouled off and out of play. We are proceeded to be the biggest winner in the major leagues with 23. So here today we have the winningest left-hander in the majors this year against the winningest right-hander in the majors this year. We are against Seaver. In there for a call, strike three. Caught him looking. First strikeout for Cuellar. The Mets are out in the second. One run on one hit, no errors, and none left at the end. The two full innings of play. The score is the Mets one and Baltimore nothing. Tony Kubek. With me down here, a man who has given 50 years of his life to baseball, the president of the National League, Mr. Warren Giles. Mr. Giles, everybody's starting to believe the Mets. Oh, I believe in them. I tell you, they have what they call going for them, something of togetherness or something, cohesion. Whatever it is, it's great. It's just wonderful for baseball that a New York team, the Cinderella team, really can do this thing and get into this world's classic. Sam, I'm kind of proud of this cap. I'm going to put that on that. NBC cap there. Our people are going to be proud of you, too. Good deal. Thank you, Mr. Giles. We appreciate you being here. Wonderful being here. Thank you. Let's go on upstairs. Mark Belanger takes a pitch high and tied for ball one. He was at the plate when Johnson was thrown out at second in the second inning. So it's Belanger's first time up. Tom Seaver with the pitch. Changes speed, gets it in there for a call strike. Breaking pitch, it's 1-1. And now Shag Crawford has turned and pointed the finger. And Crawford moves on over toward the dugout. And that's Earl Weaver, the manager of the Baltimore Orioles, coming out now. Shag Crawford calling balls and strikes here today. And Weaver's just behind him as he moves back. And he's out of the ball game. Earl Weaver has been thrown out of this world spirit. The gesture is repeated. It's a little unusual for a manager to be thrown out of a World Series because usually the commissioner explains to them before the start that this is a little something special. It's a big event, but apparently whatever he said got Crawford's immediate attention. During the season, they're not supposed to protest on uh, balls and strikes. But they say, uh, you know, unless something really unusual happens, Leave the ball players in there, the managers. This is the event. It looks like Weaver's out. And a few times. Back they'll be screwing to, well, let's see, what's he going to do? He's gone. He's down the dugout He's and gone. Down the runway and into the locker room. And the pitch is high and away and out of Alanja. Weaver's out of this ball game. We can only guess who's running the club. I guess Billy Hunter, you suppose, sir, Kurt? It's only a guess. Line drive to right and a base hit for Belanger. One hop. 
Taken by Swoboda and played back, and it's the second base hit now for the Orioles. Off Tom Seaver. Could be Bamberger. It still could be Weaver back somewhere watching it on TV, too. Number 35. There have been cases of that. Cuellar is up now in what may very well be a sacrifice situation for the Baltimore Orioles. He had won 17 during the regular season. Squares to bunt, bunts, and pulled it back, says umpire Shag Crawford, so make it a ball. And the bat out then pulled it off the pitch. It was out of the strike zone, and it is ball one. Cuellar was one for three and batted in a run in that game Saturday. It is low, 2 and up. The Mets are leading 1 0. The Orioles batting in the top of the third. 2 0 pitch. In the strike zone, it's 2 and 1. Squared again. Sacrifice has apparently been on on all three pitches. it into left field for a base hit. Moving on to second is Belanger and Cuellar is on it first with a single to left. Left the butt and then punched it to left field. Nobody out runners first and second. You see a lot of players try and do that. It's difficult. Cuellar was a real artist with that one. Now it's Don Buford coming up and he's a switch hitter. He's been up one time and he struck out. protecting against the sacrifice possibility here with Clendenin in on the grass at first and Charles on the edge of the grass at third. Seaver will cover on the third base side and it's in for a strike as he was squaring to bunt and took the pitch in the strike zone. Matt here will have Clendenin covering on the first base side. Seaver on the third base side. Charles hanging around the bag to take a possible throw for a possible force. Breaking pitch inside low, blocked by Grody. He was around to bunt again. Belanger at second. And Cuellar at first. Lindsay, you've seen Seaver since he came up with the Mets. He's a very good fielding pitcher, isn't he? Excellent fielding pitcher. He's agile. He's a good all-round athlete. This will be a 1-1 pitch to Don Buford. Hammered on the ground to Clendenin. What a play. The force at second and no throwback. Moving on to third is Belanger as they get the middleman Cuellar. That ball came within a millimeter of being bounced over the head of Clendenin at first base. He was way in on the edge of the grass. So now runners at first and third. One man out and Paul Blair coming up. That six foot four frame didn't hurt the Mets there at first base. Didn't hurt at all. And Paul Blair is up now. He had the first base into this ball game in the first inning off Tom Seaver. Mets keep Harrelson and Weiss at double play depth. The Mets are leading one nothing. The Orioles threatening here in the top half of the third inning. Seaver off the stretch. Breaking pitch low and away into the dirt again. Buford is at first. But Langer is the runner at third. The 1 0 pitch to Blair. Swung on and this. It's 1 1. Langer at third and Buford at first with one away. The 
ball is bounded up into the air, and Seaver lets it drop. Now goes to first, and now they have a shot, but no throw at second. Seaver purposely let the ball drop to see if he had a possible shot at a double play. He decided he'd better hustle it over to first, and then no throw was made to second on Buford. Two men out, runners at second and third. That's the same play that Paul Blair pulled in the 12th inning against right the Minnesota Miller. Twins with a bunt down right. the third baseline. Robinson. It was a safety squeeze. The Lions was waiting at third to see what happened. But I think you're right. Uh, Seaver was trying to set it up for the double play and thought he might be too late at second. Seaver on more than one occasion has alertly done just that sort of thing to get two when he might have got one. Frank Robinson now up there. And it's high and away for a ball. It's one and oh. Buford at second, Belanger at third, two men out. Mets are leading by a score of one to nothing. Robinson flied to center in the first inning, to left center. Breaking pitch, misses low and away, and it's two and oh. Seaver's control has not been exceptionally sharp. Belanger at third, Buford at second. Fastball, one on and miss, and it's 2-1. Of course, he realizes that all he has to do is make a slight mistake to Frank Robinson up there right now, and it's two runs, and the Orioles are out in front. 2-1 delivery. And it's popped up, foul to the right side, and playable to Don Clendenin. Side is out. Two hits, no errors, and two left. And in the middle of the third inning, the score is the Mets one and the Orioles nothing. Hey, Lou. The, uh, over here in the press box, they're all saying that there's... They don't think Weaver's been officially thrown out. I'm sure he's out. All right, well, why don't you scan it, Lindsay, and I'll talk about it on the air because... They can't ever remember a manager being ejected from a World Series game. No. From the dugout. given the heave hole sign it looked like from umpire Shag Crawford we cannot find him in the dugout there's some question along the press that he is officially out of the game and many of the old timers who've covered World Series for years cannot ever remember a manager being ejected from a World Series game Al Weiss is up and he takes it in there for strike one this is uh, Weiss's first time up and it's low for a ball, it's 1-1. One, one. Well, I'm sure that Harold Weissman, the Mets Director of Public Relations, will be able to get in touch downstairs and we'll get uh, definite information. Here's a swing and a miss, it's one and two on Weaver's status. Here's a one-two pitch, swung on, hit on the ground to third and Brooks Robinson does not handle it and Weiss is on at first. The Oriole third baseman. Brooks Robinson moved to his left and retreated, and he was off his glove and chest. That'll bring up Tom Seaver in a sacrifice circumstance here. We'll wait for a scorer's decision. The scorers are Dick Young of the New York Daily News, Joe Derso of the New York Times, and Lou Hatter of the Baltimore Sun. Orioles protect against the sacrifice likelihood as Seaver bunts foul for strike one. 
White scored as a base hit. It is a base hit for Al White. Sacrifice still on, and it's low out of the strike zone, 1-1. One, one. The Mets are leading one to nothing, and they're batting here in the bottom half of the third inning. Seaver has checked with the sign man, Eddie Yost, at third base. Low for a ball, it's two and one. Seaver checks the sign again. Weiss takes the lead at first, and there's nobody out. 2-1 pitch. Bunt it on and miss. No throw. Nobody at the bag. And it's 2-2. Ellie Hendricks had the arm cock. There's Yost running through the signs for him. Yost never played a day of minor league baseball. He has a master's degree from New York University. It's said that the Met coach at first, Yogi Berra, has a doctor's degree from Casey Stingle. It is bunted foul, and it's 2-2. Second, it's the third strike bunted, and he's a strikeout victim. It was the third strike bunted foul, and he is a strikeout victim. The second for Cuellar. That'll ring up Tommy Agee, who has been up one time, and he grounded out third to first. Runner at first now, one away. Bottom half of the third inning. Breaking pitch in for a called strike. Third and Weiss holds it second. So Ag is on it first. He ripped that one into left field. Watch him go after this low pitch now. Cocks that leg a little. Golfing the low pitch. Bud Harrelson's coming up. He's a switch hitter batting right. He's been up one time and had a single to left field. Strike one. Runners returning A.G. to first and Weiss to second. And Jim Harden is up and throwing in the bullpen now for the Baltimore Orioles. Right-hander Jim Harden. The count is strike one to Harrelson. There's one man out. Missed outside, it's one and one. Screwball. trying to feel that ball and he just found his way back there. So now it'll be Cleon Jones coming up with runners at second and third and two men on. Cleon bounced into a double play in the first inning. He's had only one hit in the World Series thus far. was the National League's all-star left fielder this year. Foul off and out of play. Strike one.
Al Weiss at third. Tommy A.G. at second with two away. Mike Cuellar. Ground ball. And it's taken by Robinson. And the play to foul in time. The Magic Glove came up with that one. And the side is retired. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left. The end of three full innings of play, the score is the Mets won, the Orioles nothing. Tony, Tony Kubek. Thank you, Lindsey. Gordon McCray, your pipes were in good tune today for the National Anthem. Well, thank you very much, Tony. It was a privilege to be invited here to sing. Uh, once again, I open up the season with the Mets. It's great to see this team come along, not only for baseball, for all sports, for New York, and for, I guess, the country in general. Wouldn't you say, Tony? Gordon McCray, thank you so much. Right now, let's you and I sit down and watch the ball game. Right. Let's go back upstairs. Lou Powell at the plate, Seavers pitch in there for a call strike. Powell's been up one time and he was called out on strike. Through three innings, the Mets one run, four hits, no errors, and the Orioles no runs, three hits, no errors. Fastball in tight. It's one and one. Brooks Robinson there on deck. Her ball hit on the ground to second. It's second by Weiss and can Clendenin get back? He can, and if he couldn't have, Seaver was there. One away. Third baseman. Watch Joe Garagiola each morning on the Today Show as he brings you highlights of the World Series and talks with stars of each game. That's a great way to start the day, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Brooks Robinson, then up one time, grounded out short to first. him off of the slider. That is popped up. Charles and Harrelson, and Charles makes the catch as Harrelson leans out of his way. Leaning right over the cylinder on which the tarp is rolled up. Catcher. That'll Elrod. Elrod Hendricks. Hendricks. He's been up one time and he drew a walk. Tom and Nancy Seaver have a pet dog, and the name of the dog is Slider, which might give you some idea of what Seaver's pet pitch is. We just received word from the Baltimore dugout that Billy Hunter, the coach, is now running the Baltimore club after the uh, manager, Earl Weaver, had been ejected by umpire Shag Crawford. There's a pitch low for a ball. It's 1-0. And Lindsay, they went up and down the press road of many of the veteran riders, and none of them can ever recall a manager being thrown out of a series game. Bow back and out of play. It's 1-1. One, one. Of course, we remember the 34 series, the Cardinals and the Tigers, when the Commissioner Landis had to remove Joe Medwick from the field when the Tiger fans showered the field with fruit when he went out to take his position in the outfield. There's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Change up. Did not get it in the strike zone. It's two and one. Two on delivery. Swung on, hammered on the ground, and it is Clendenin to Seaver for the put up. On Clendenin, ranging wide to make the play. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And in the middle of the fourth inning, the score is 
the Mets won. And the Orioles, nothing. Station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. This is Lindsey Nelson with Kurt Gowdy and Tony Kubek at Shea Stadium in New York and another sellout crowd packed and jammed here. Seaver got spiked on that last play and so trainer Gus March is there. The ethyl chloride and uh, a little more medication. That's manager Gil Hodges looking on. Seaver got spiked on the last play as he covered first base and took the throw there. So he's getting attention to the left foot in the dugout. It's Clint Denon up now. He had a home run earlier that provided the only run in this ball game. Swings and misses during the season. Only four of Clint Denon's 12 home runs for the Mets were hit here at Shea Stadium. Two strike count. Looks like Clendenin set a pattern for the Mets after their opening loss to the Orioles. He said they didn't overpower us. He said, I'm not in awe of them. I'm more convinced than ever now we're going to win the series. That was his statement. We are pitch low and away, and it's one and two. On the outside corner, a call strike three. Strike him out with the scourge. Here's Seaver now, watching as the play is made there. He gets Spike right there, right there. The left foot, as you saw. Ron Swoboda has been up one time, and he grounded out short to first. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning, a swing and a miss, strike one. Atlanta Braves started no left-handers against the Mets in the championship series. The Mets used their left-handed batting order for the three games in which they swept the Atlanta Braves for the National League pennant. There's a base hit up the middle now for Ron Svoboda. Punched it on the ground. Blair returns it, and Svoboda is on. Third baseman. That is hit number five for the Mets off Cuellar and brings up Ed Charles. Number five. At one time, grounded out short to first. I think Ed Charles is enjoying being in the World Series as much as any player on either team. There's Brody on deck. And he is hit by the pitch ball. Charles hit by the pitch ball. Trying to get out of the way with that fastball. Rolls right out into it. And Charles now like he was hit on the finger. Gus Moss, the Met trainer, Gil Hodges with his back to you, the manager. 
suddenly the Mets have come up with a couple of injuries. Their pitch receiver's been spiked, now their third baseman. Ben Hilton. Third double play in the game for the Orioles. And they just nipped Seaver at first base. Seaver and Yogi Berra thought that Seaver had her beaten now. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of five innings, it's New York one and Baltimore nothing. Identification. John Buford, Paul Blair, and Frank Robinson. The top of the order for the Orioles in the sixth inning. New York leading 1 0. Buford has struck out, bounced into a force play. The curve is inside. And the Orioles, a top run producing team all year, have now been scoreless in their last 16 innings. 1 and 1 to him. They have scored just one run in the last 27 innings. Say they've been stopped cold by the Met pitchers. That's an understatement. The 1 1 pitch. Foul back. It's 1 and 2. Official paid today 57,367. Seaver struggled a bit in the second, in the third, but now he's retired nine in a row. He seems to be getting a little stronger and sharper as the game progresses. One ball, two strikes. Bounding ball to Clendenin. The play to Seaver covering. And, uh, the Orioles have had just three hits today. They had four yesterday and two last Sunday in Baltimore. Ball. Paul Blair. Blair has singled. Number six. And been thrown out by the pitcher. Those that have joined us late, it's about 67, 68 degrees here. This has been the coolest game of the World Series so far. There's Frank Robinson on deck. But a brilliant, sunshiny afternoon, and right now, no breeze. One out, nobody on. One and all. Seaver mixing up his pitches. Fastball, slider, curve, change up now and then. High with that pitch, two and nothing. And also for those that joined us late, Earl Weaver, the manager of the Orioles, has been kicked out of this game in the third inning, the top of the third. All three, three and nothing. Billy Hunter, the third base coach, is running the team. There he is, the acting manager. 
Three and nothing to Paul Blair. Right into him. Three and one. Ball four. That's the right second fielder. walk given up Frank. by Robinson. Tom Seaver. Frank Number Robinson's 20. fly to center, fouled out. Frank now has had one hit out of 11. carried his stardom into both leagues. Most valuable player in the National League. Most valuable player in the American League. The only man to ever do that in Major League history. Lifetime batting averages of 303 in the National and 303 in the American. One and nothing to Frank Robinson. Blair at first. One out. Two and nothing now. And Grody decides you better have a little chat with Seaver. Boog Powell on deck. Two and nothing to Frank Robinson. Ripped away, two and one. Blair, who stole 20 bases during the season, is on first. That foul is twisting toward the seats, going to be out of play. It's not going to be much longer until the shadows are going to be over the batter's box. And the pitcher is going to be throwing out of that glare, that bright sun from the pitcher's mound. The batter is going to be in the darkness, which makes it tougher on the hitter. Two balls, two strikes. One out, Blair at first. A high pop up. Bud Harrelson, the shortstop, calling for it. Two down. Taking a call for a strike and grounded out. He's had uh, three out of 13. They've all been singles. The singles have been in the hole, the right field. At the Orioles, uh, Lindsay, have had only two extra base hits in this series, both by the same man, a home run and a double by Don Buford in the opening game. In the dugout before the game, some writers were saying to manager Earl Weaver, what do you think has stopped the power of the Orioles? He said, those fellas out there on the mound. Blair at first, two down, Mets leading one to nothing, top of the sixth inning. One to nothing to foul. Seaver's been working outside to him today. out there, two and nothing. Seaver's winning percentage of 781 this year was the best of the National League among pitchers who won at least 15 games. That's Brooke Robinson in the on-deck circle. Two and nothing. Outside to him again, three and nothing. He's throwing very hard, though. He appears to have a live fastball right now. It's crackling. Trying to keep Powell from pulling the ball to right. Gets it in there to him. Powell fouls it off his foot. Boog was going after that 3-0 pitch. He figured that probably would be as good as a pitch he was going to get. Top of his right instep. 
That hurts. I've seen some players, Lindsay, they have to wear the shin guards. Uh, Ted Williams used to wear one, fix words. Certain players, they, they get a bone bruise and it stays with them for months. Well, that's how Frank Robinson uh, hurt his right end step, taking batting practice. Foul one off of it. A count to Booth Powell, three balls and a strike, two down. Paul Blair at first. New York Mets leading the Baltimore Orioles, one to nothing, in the top of the sixth inning. Runner going. Foul back. Blair had a good jump that time. Three and two to Booth Powell. When Denner looked over into the dugout and he said, play on the bag, he was going to be off the bag. Hodges ordered him to hold Blair so he couldn't get too good a lead. Green 2-2 two, two down, he'll be going. There goes Blair. Foul back. All right, we're ready for another three and two pitch. See Blair break now. On the way. Foul again by Powell. If the World Series goes seven games next Sunday, you'll see another baseball football doubleheader on NBC. Coverage beginning at 1.30 Eastern Time. If there's no World Series game on Sunday, you'll see an AFL football doubleheader with a 1.30 Eastern Time start. Next Sunday's game in the American Football League. Denver's playing at Cincinnati. San Diego at Boston, Buffalo at Oakland, Miami at Kansas City. Check your local listings for the game or games in your area. Some kind of a query, Kurt, that uh, Seaver had of umpire Lee Wire at second, and then Wire took the baseball, examined it, and threw it out, and another one's been put in play. Three and two is the count to Book Powell, two down, Paul Blair at first. Blair starts, Powell hits a high fly in the left center. Agee's calling for the ball, and the Orioles are gone in the set. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of five and a half, New York one and Baltimore nothing. Wounded U.S. service men in military hospitals throughout Japan, the Philippines, Okinawa, Guam, and Hawaii. Gaylord Terry, the Giants, Ed Charles, the Mets, Bob Beale, the Pirates, Bill Regan, the Cubs, 
and John Odom of the A's will be making a trip overseas to talk and entertain our men in the Far East. Tommy Agee bounds it to Brooks Robinson. Agee, who previously had grounded out in single, is retired on the first pitch. We understand that for four minutes, and George Top. Eight right. minutes past two to uh, two twelve. We lost our audio very through technical difficulties. We apologize for that. And I think everything is all right again. It was a technical problem. Harrelson trying to butt. Foul ball to him. He single and grounded out. Don Clendenin's homer leading off the second is the difference of this game right now. The Mets are leading one to nothing. Last of the sixth. Leon Jones will be on deck. Sinker ball, nothing in two. Cuellar, born in Cuba, lives in Puerto Rico. There's Jones. The ball is called Crazy Horse by his teammates. So I'll tell you, he's not crazy when he throws that baseball. He knows what he's doing with it. He has a command of five pitches. He has learned his craft. Two and two count. Little pop up. Dave Johnson, the second baseman. Puts it away, and we have two down. Cleon Jones is one of the four Mets in this series who has not been. Platoon. That is, he stays in no matter who's pitching, left or right. This year he hit 344 against left handers and 338 against right handers. Team leaders against both kinds of pitching, so you can see why Hodges plays him all the way. He has hit into a double play, started by shortstop Belanger. He's bounced out to third. He's played about two steps toward left right now. The ball. One ball, no strikes. To Leon Jones. Changed up on it. Two and nothing. Five strikeouts for Mike Cuellar. He's not walked a batter. Hard to short. The Langer finally gets the handle and over to first. The Mets are down one, two, three. These two shortstops and both play great ball. At the end of six innings, the score: New York one and Baltimore nothing. Join us again tomorrow, 12:30 Eastern Daylight Time. We'll start with World Series report: Jim Simpson, Sandy Koufax, and Mickey Mantle, and then Game Five of the World Series in living color right here on NBC. Brooks Robinson grounded a short and fouled out. One to nothing. Seavers allowed just three hits. Headed toward the seats. Oh, 
Seaver has struck out three, walked two. Blair single in the first. Belanger and Claire had back-to-back -back singles in the third. The Orioles haven't had a hit since the third. Just off the corner, two and one. Veteran right-hander Dick Hall now is warming up for the Orioles. Foul back. Two and two to Brooks Robinson. About another five minutes, that batter is going to be in the shadows. It's slowly to Charles. Goes Robinson out with one down in the seventh. Well, the Orioles now have gone. Thatcher, Elrod, Hendricks. 17 in the third innings without a run. There's a call. Ellie Hendricks has walked and grounded out. Glenn Denon covers the first baseline against him. The outfield swings toward right. You can look out there and see A.G. in right center for him. Nothing a one to Hendricks. in the stands down below us. He pops it off. As Seaver jammed him right on the fist. Harrelson squeezes it out number two. Seaver right now is overpowering these batters. Second baseman. Dave. Johnson. Number 15. Dave Johnson looking for his first World Series hit in 69 has gone 0 for 8 coming into today. Force play and he's flied out to left. Nothing a one to him. Sanders tomorrow, Kuzman and McNally. They were matched up on Sunday in Baltimore. Two down, nobody on. One and two to Dave Johnson. Mets are leading one to nothing in the top of the seventh. Tom Seaver. At the end of six and a half innings, it's New York one and Baltimore nothing. Tony Quebec. With me, one of baseball's all-time great, Stan Musin and Stanley. That Seaver looks like he's getting loosened up. Yes, he is. His uh, control is a lot better now. He's throwing uh, much harder, so he's uh, pitching uh, very well. Stan Musial, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on for this short period. Very good. Fine. Thank you very much. Let's... Well, the fans of 
Set back down after the Mets have a good stretch, and Don Clendenin has strike one on him. He hit a home run, the only run of this game. That came in the second. He struck out in the fourth. Nothing in two. He had tagged Cuellar for two hits in the opening game of the series. Cuellar is pitching him a little bit differently now. Down low, a lot of breaking stuff. Foul out of play. Well, this may be the last inning we'll see Cuellar, Lindsay. The Orioles have Cuellar due to hit in the top of the eighth. Might very well be. They are still trailing by one. Come backer to Cuellar. Easy play over to Powell. There's one out. Ron Sloboda's right now. He's grounded a short and he's single to center. Ed Charles will be on deck. One run, six hits for the Mets. No runs, three hits for the Orioles. Hit a curveball to left field. Buford back in. The boat is on. That's base hit number seven for the Mets. Third baseman. And Charles. Number five. Ed Charles has grounded out and struck out. One and all to Ed Charles. Two and nothing to him. First, one out. Line drive deep. Buford's there. Two down. Catcher. Out of Clendenin's home run. That's been the hardest hit ball of the game. Number 15. Gary Grody has struck out twice. One and all to Grody. Mets are ahead one to nothing. Flash to the seventh, the Orioles in the eighth. Have Belanger, Cuellar, and Buford scheduled up. That's Al Weiss on deck for New York. Foul out of play. The payoff to the players have been increased this year. The winners will get roughly uh, around $15,000. Last year, the winning Tigers got $11,000 apiece. The losers will get. Uh, 10,000, depending on the gate, but at least that, two and one. And uh, the losers last year, the Cardinals, collected $7,000 a share. Well, there's a little money on the line here this week. Players have not overlooked that fact. The 2 1 pitch, 3 and 1. one situation the Mets have been starting their runner the series Let's see if they do it again the boat is the man there Brody's the batter with a count of three and one 
Board is holding and it's foul back. Now with two downs, Swoboda will go. Nothing. And producing Rudy and Rudy. All right, boys, watch for your pinch hitters. Yeah, I want the ball pad and the whole thing, yeah, man. There's somebody up there. warming up, Lou. We pause now for station identification. Gowdy with Lindsey Nelson here at Shea Stadium. Mark Belanger leads off for the Orioles in the eighth inning. Strike one. Eddie Watt is warming up in the Oriole bullpen, and Dave May is on deck to bat for Mike Cuellar. And the Mets pitching staff earned run average in this World Series 1.36. <clears throat> Pops it up. It's a curveball. One down. The Orioles have not had a hit since Cuellar single in the third. Dave May hit 242 this year. There's any, uh, let's see, that's on the Mets side. Don Cardwell. Don Cardwell, a veteran right-hander. Dave May hit 242 with three homers. Your attention, Dave Cuellar. May now batting for Cuellar. Ladies and gentlemen. Cuellar pitched himself. A fine ball game, but not Dave quite as good as Tom Seaver. Number 12. Don Buford's on deck. Ball one. The Mets have stopped the Orioles with no runs in the last 18 in the third innings. Only one run in the last 29 in the third inning. One ball, one strike. Three, six, nine, 13, 16, 17. Seavers retired 16 of the last 17. Curve, missed. Two balls and a strike. Last ball, two and two. Checking back. And uh, talking to a lot of people in the press row, radio, TV row, the third game of the 35 World Series, Charlie Grimm of the Cubs was ejected from a World Series game, the manager of the Cubs. Peter is getting tougher and tougher as this game goes along. 
The only other time it's ever happened. Earl Number Weaver nine. was kicked out of this game in the third inning. Number nine. Evidently protesting a ball and strike decision. What was said? Only Weaver and the umpire Shag Crawford know. Weaver's annex with umpires were legendary during his minor league career. There was a time in the Eastern League he was ejected and sat down on third base. When he finally was persuaded to leave, he took the bag with him into the clubhouse. Five strikeouts for Seaver. Don Buford watches that slow ball. One to nothing. One to nothing. New York Mets leading in the top of the eighth. The Orioles have two down, nobody on. Foul back. They're just not getting a good piece of anything off this kid. Seaver's last eight starts in the regular season. He pitched eight complete games and allowed only eight earned runs in those last eight games. Popped up. Third baseman Ed Charles there. And it's another one through three innings for Seaver. At the end of seven and a half innings, it's the Mets one and the Orioles nothing. Again, Tony Quebec. Thank you, Kurt and Lindsay. With me down here, the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, Red Shanies. And Red, I'm trying to think of a pitching staff that I've seen in a good many years that can throw as hard as this Mets staff. Well, uh, like everybody says, good pitching will stop good hitting, and so far the Mets pitchers have been doing a real good job. And Seavers hadn't been uh, pitching as well uh, lately as he had been in the beginning of the year and all year. But today, after the fourth and fifth inning, he looked like his coordination and he's real study right now, and he's really firing the ball right now. Well, Red, you know, it looks like here's a fellow that pitched almost 300 innings during the season. You think Seaver's arm could be a little bit tired? I don't think he's uh, that tired because they usually uh, use practically a five-man rotation all year, so he couldn't be too tired. But uh, he's in the groove right now and throwing well. Red, have you seen much of the Oriole ball club? How do they impress you? Well, they got a terrific ball club with a guy at third base. Their whole infield, the outfield, good hitting, good defense, and their pitching is good. But like uh, you, uh, you get good pitching against another good ball club, and uh, it depends on all pitching, and so far it's the Mets. Red Shaneys, thank you so much. Incidentally, good luck next year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Red Shaneys. Let's go on back upstairs. Okay, Tony and Eddie Watt, 27 years old. Al. Is now on. He led the Baltimore staff in most appearances this year with 56. His record was five wins, two losses. He had 16 saves and a low earned run average of 1.65. Al Weiss, two for two. Two singles. Four for six in the series. Strike to him. Straight away for Weiss and not too deep. Seaver will be on deck. He'll get a big ovation. Fly ball to left field. Buford almost in his tracks. One out. And as Seaver comes up, watch the crowd respond here at Shea Stadium. sort of thing that happens all year long here at Shea where the fans became famous before the team did. Kurt, they believe in lavishing praise on their very own and Seaver's been their very special pet. Strike. 
He struck out and into a double play. Isn't he the one to really set the pattern that we can be a winner someday here? Absolutely. It was uh, his conduct and his belief. Dave Johnson, the second baseman, handles Seaver's grounder, who just crossed it out and tried to conserve his energy for the top of the ninth. Now the top of the order and Tom Agee grounded out, single and grounded out. And speaking of the top of the ninth, as Agee will move up, the Orioles will have Blair, Frank Robinson, and Booth Powell. As Seaver will have to get the big boys in the Baltimore lineup out again. Been a tremendous year for baseball. Their centennial year. All time teams picked. The All Star game in the nation's capital. Reception by President Nixon there for baseball people. Now ball, a new concept, four divisions. The wild, wild west with five teams in the race down to the last week. The Mets lit up the whole nation with their story of overhauling the Cubs. Attendance record broken again. Sweep by the Orioles and the Mets in the playoffs and now the World Series. So it's a one two three inning for any watch. And at the end of eight innings at Chase Stadium it's the Mets one and the Orioles nothing. Tip of the hat today, Lindsay, to Mike Cuellar, who pitched seven innings, seven hits, one run, the home run by Clendenin. Didn't walk a batter, struck out four. Great performance. Tom Seaver. Strikes the knee. The cost victory for identification. This is the NBC Television Network. On deck is Frank Robinson. Seaver. Curves strike two. He has been getting sharper and sharper as this game has gone on. He's retired eight in a row. Eighteen of the last 19 batters. One ball, two strikes. The only man to reach base since the third is Blair, who walked in the sixth. One and two to Paul Blair. Being played straight away and fairly deep. There's a fly ball to right field. Ron Kubota is waiting for it. One out. Frank Robinson. Frank Miller. And Boog Powell. Either one of these men with one Number swing 20. of the bat can tie this game. That's Nancy Seaver. She gets a little emotionally involved in these things, Fred, and she always sits in that seat when Tom is pitching. Outside of Robinson, ball one. A handsome young couple. They are indeed. Robinson's fly to center, fouled out and popped up. There's Boot Powell on deck. Check swing foul, one and one. Show you how overpowering the Mets pitching was during the latter part of the year. In their last 45 games, they had one shutout every three games. 
15 shutouts of their last 45. They went over 800 batters faced their pitching and not one got a home run in one streak. 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball two to Robinson, two and one. The Orioles were shut out eight times during the American League season, but never twice in a row. They're two outs from being shut out twice in a row today. Now back to a two to Robinson. So the last 19 in the third inning, the Orioles have failed to score. They've had only one run in their last 30 in the third inning. Ed Charles right on the third base line against Robinson. The guard against the extra base hit. The foul is going to be out of play. You can see Charles. Here in the ninth inning with one out. Step off the line. And Glenn Denham's guarding the first baseline. They're guarding the corner. Two and two to Frank Robinson. Coming back and out of play. Robinson's had some good swings. Just getting a piece of it. That's when you know that pitcher's got good stuff. Seaver reminds you a lot of Robin Roberts. He's trying. The 2 2 delivery. Base hit to left field by Frank Robinson. Fumbled momentarily. Robinson is holding, though. So the Orioles have the tying run on now in the top of the ninth. And Booth Powell the batter. There's the first hit for the Orioles since the third. Powell has struck out, grounded out, fly to center. First baseman, John Powell. Right-hander Ron Taylor, left-hander Tuck McGraw are heating up in the Met bullpen. One to nothing. Mets leading in the ninth inning. Frank Robinson at first. One out for the Orioles. Now the batter, Brooks Robinson on deck. Right. Seaver's challenging these hitters with his fastball. They're deep and about three steps to right for Powell. He can hit the power to left center also. Danger. Bounding ball in the right field. Robinson will come to third. Here's the throw by Swoboda. Cut off by the shortstop, Harrelson. And the Orioles have the tying run at third now. The lead run at first with one away. They finally got a ball over Clendenin's head. Gil Hodges never showing much emotion. Finally he's excited and gets up. That's Jerry Kuzman there just beside him. He'll be starting tomorrow. Here comes Gil. Blair flying out. Frank Robinson single to left. Boog Powell a single to right, sending Robinson to third. Batter will be Brooks Robinson. McGraw and Taylor in the bullpen. Leaving him in. There's Taylor the right-hander, McGraw the left-hander. One down. Fly ball to tie it up for the Orioles. Nancy Seaver. Robinson has not had the ball out of the infield. Ground of the short, fouled out, ground of the third. Straight away for him in the outfield. And there's a drive to right center. 
Swoboda from Dublin at the call to third. Here comes Frank Robinson. The game is tied. Ron Swoboda making another sensational catch for the Mets. Frank Robinson, the old veteran, is going to appeal a third that Robinson left too quickly. But Frank Robinson, here's a grab. Look at that, Lindsay. Beautiful catch by Ron Swoboda. And now the Mets are going to pull the appeal play at third. The call is safe. Frank Robinson, a very, very Catcher. smart Catcher. ball player all his career, Catcher. played that Catcher. one perfectly. He waited there at third. That ball hit hard. Left as soon as Swoboda touched it. If Swoboda had missed that ball, the Orioles would have gone ahead. It would have rolled in the fence. And Booth Powell, although not a fast man, probably could have scored from first. So they're two down. We're in a 1-1 ball game now. And give Brooks Robinson a sacrifice fly. The last three men in a row now have tag Seaver. Ball two. Brooks Robinson has come through so many times over the years with clutch hits for the Orioles. That time was a clutch drive that got the tying run in. There's a long belt down the right field line, and that one is foul. Ellie Henry just missed a two-run homer. And these Mets fans are ooing and aahing now. I believe Seaver is too, and there is Hodges. Two balls, one strike. Two down, foul at first. Three and one to Ellie Henry. Dave Johnson's on deck. The Orioles finally cracked back into the scoring column. Brooks Robinson drove in the last Oriole run in the seventh inning of the second game. Foul back off the fist is three and two. With two down, foul will be going on this pitch. Jones has made a fine play in left today and Swoboda that diving stab in right. The three-two pitch, Leonard going. A drive out into right field. Swoboda's over there, flags it down. One run for the Orioles. Two hits, no error, one left. At the end of eight and a half, the game is now tied, one to one. What? Join us again tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Time when NBC Sports begins its coverage of Game 5 of the World Series. World Series report hosted by Jim Simpson with Sandy Koufax and Mickey Mantle. Then Dave McNally of the Orioles goes against Gary Kuzma of the Mets. Living Color on NBC. Bud Harrelson, Leon Jones, and Don Glendennis will be up. Eddie Watts pitch, foul off by Harrelson, who is single, grounded out, and popped up. In the bullpen for the Orioles now, right-hander Dick Hall and left-hander Pete Rickard. Eddie Watt retired the Mets in order in the eighth. Mike Player now is off the hook and no longer the pitcher of record. The ball, one and one to Harrelson. One run, five hits for the Orioles, one run, seven hits for the Mets. That's the Baltimore bullpen. Strike two to Harrelson, one and two. So how many uh, better catches have you seen Swoboda make that during the year, Lindsay? That was a Lulu. Two and two. If he, his dive, if he'd missed that ball. The two-two delivery. A little bounding ball by the pitcher, charged by Johnson. Snap! He has him at first base. Davy Johnson, second baseman, charging that one. Left fielder. Play on. Young. One out. And Cleon 
Jones up. And still the most unexcited man in this ballpark is the manager, Gil Hodges. That's the Oriole dugout. Jones has not had the ball out of the infield. He hit into a double play, grounded the third, grounded the short. One to one, last of the ninth inning. dugout in game two with a black snake draped around his neck. Mo Drabowski left it in the clubhouse. Two one pitch. Ground ball in the left field and the next ball has the winning run at first. Buford back in to David Johnson. Leon Jones at first. One out, last of the ninth inning. Game tied, one to one. On deck is Ron Swoboda. Pitchers. Had him going for a bad ball that time. Two down. The boat will get a hand for that diving catch. Round the short and that two hits. Number four. Jones at first stole 16 bases during the season. They're two down. Curve is hit in the air to right field. Frank Robinson coming. Can't get it. And in the third is Jones. The throw comes into Powell. Runners on first and third. Devota has his third hit in a row. As he loops it in the shallow right. Shamsky now is coming out to bat for Ed Charles. The left-handed hitter, Art Shamsky. Remember Earl Weaver, the manager of the Orioles, was ejected from this game in the third inning. The coach, Billy Hunter, is now running the club. And here is Bamberger, the pitching coach of the Orioles, coming Back out. Number 24, Mark. Let's see if they make a move to Rickert, the left-hander. Now they're calling Boog Powell over. The Mets now have the winning run at third in Cleon Jones. 
He's the man that counts. Well, both is at first. They're two down. The game tied one to one in the last of the night. Shamsky hit 300 this year, had 14 homers. He tore the Braves up. He had seven out of 13 against the Braves in the National League Championship Series. Watt is staying in. Shamsky's played as a pull hitter to right field. Seats for him in time right here at Shea Stadium. Swings and bounds it out to Dave Johnson, and we're going to extra innings. Jansky grounds out on the first pitch. No runs for the Mets. Two hits. There were no errors. And two men left. At the end of nine, it's Baltimore one and New York one. To the press gate, please. Thank you. presents a day in October. What does it mean? A 90-minute program evaluating today's Vietnam moratorium. Frank McGee, John Chancellor, and Edward Newman will join other NBC correspondents. Tonight at 11.30 on NBC, and right now at 3.19 New York time, we're going to the 10th inning at Shea Stadium. And to tell you about the 10th inning, Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Dave Gowdy, and hello again, everybody. Dave Johnson coming up. Wayne Garrett is now playing third base for the New York Mets. Ed Charles having been removed for the pinch hitter. Seaver still on the mound, and here's the pitch. In there for a call strike. Seaver has been in here all the way. He struck out five and walked two. Breaking pitch hits to Garrett, and on through him, and off toward the rolled-up cylinder, backed up by Harrelson to hold him to one base. Johnson leads off here in the top half of the 10th inning. And he's on at first. It'll be Belanger coming up now, the number eight man in the order. Checking with Billy Hunter, who is the acting manager with Earl Weaver, having been ejected by umpire Shag Crawford. Dick Hall throwing out in the bullpen now for the Baltimore Orioles with Belanger up there. was Johnson's first hit in this series. He was 0 for 11. The Langer squares. Grody moves in to take it. It is strike one. Johnson the runner at first. We're in extra innings here at Shea Stadium in New York. Fourth game of the World Series. Run it up into the air. Who can play it? Grody can and foul territory. Watt is going back to the dugout, and I think we'll get somebody to bat for Eddie Watt. Clay Dalrymple has come out with a bat. Clay Dalrymple, who is a left-hand batter, a catcher by trade, formerly with the Philadelphia Phillies. He is batting for Watt, and Dick Hall throwing in the bullpen. For Baltimore, batting for Watt. Number three. The last extra Play inning Dalrymple. game before today in the World Series was the fifth game of the 1964 World Series. St. Louis won it five to two at Yankee Stadium in ten innings. Tell you what to do. As they call. Last ball is low. the runner at first with one man out. Line in the center field for a base hook for the Orioles. A.G. one hops the ball. Johnson holds it second. A.G. returns it. Dal Ruffles on there. Runners at first and second. One man out and Don Buford coming up. Score tied 1-1. One one. The Orioles have added in the top half of the 10th inning. And here comes pitching coach Rube Walker. To the mound for a word with Seaver. The bullpen is busy. Ron Taylor and Tug McGraw, right-hander and left-hander, in double barrel action in the Met bullpen. There they are. C. 
Beaver stays in the ball game. Buford is a switch hitter. Struck out, grounded into a force play, grounded out first base to the pitcher covering and popped out. Breaking pitch low for a ball. Buford homered off Seaver last Saturday in Baltimore. Johnson at second base. Dal Ruffle at first base. And it's a high fly ball to deep right field. Travolta's back in the warning track. Has it lined up. Johnson tags at second. Moves across. Throw goes to second. Runners at first and third now with two away. Bring up Paul Blair. Number six. Had a base hit. Tried to run his way on and was thrown out at first. Walked and flat out to right field. So the Orioles have the go ahead run at third base now. With runners at first and third, two away in the top half of the tenth inning. He began in the Pittsburgh Pirate organization in 1952 and opened one season for the Pirates as a third baseman. He is an alumnus of Swarthmore, and when he was undressing after the ball game in the locker room, one of the Pirate veterans looked across and said, what's that on your T-shirt? He said, my fraternity pen. They said, the way you play third base, you better take it off. It'll be permanently attached to your chest. 
One thing he does and has done over the years, Lindsay, probably as well as anyone in the major leagues, is throw strikes. He gets the ball over, and he went to camp this year, of course, with the Orioles as a free agent, having been cut loose by the Philadelphia Phillies, made a place for himself, and he's been a handyman to have around. So it's in the hands of Dick Hall for the Orioles now as the Mets send up the number seven man in their order, Jerry Grody, who struck out looking, struck out swinging, and grounded out. 0 for 3 for the day. Bottom half of the 10th inning before a crowd of more than 57,000 at Shea Stadium in New York. Game number four of the 1969 World Series. The Mets leading two games to one coming into today's game. Now back at strike one. The Mets got a run in the second here today that stood up until the top of the ninth when the Orioles scored one to keep this game alive. Kane Jeff and it's high. Now Weiss on deck. That's high and off the glove of Ellie Hendricks. No damage done. There are no base runners. It's two balls and a strike now to Jerry Grody. Only Tug McGraw throwing at the moment in the Met bullpen. That is popped up down the right field line. Frank Robinson gives it a long run, but this is out of play. Robinson's there, Johnson's there, Powell's there, but it's well back into the lower field boxes. Two, the count now to Grody. Fouled out. Dick Hall has a deceptive delivery, if you'll notice. It's been described as something like a beach chair unfolding. Two-two pitch. It's high, a little tight. It's three and two now. I don't think Hall will get mixed up in the town, but he's quite a mathematician. This will be a payoff pitch. Popped up into short left field, and Rupert couldn't see it. He lost it in the sun on the ground. But Isaac can't handle it. Play at second base, and he is safe at second. this ball that came off the bat. He's deep out there. Look how far Belanger's going out. Now, here comes Buford breaking. If Belanger had caught this one, it would have been about as deep as you've ever seen a shortstop go out for a pop-up. Here's a throw in. Brody's in there. The Mets have the winning run. Now at second base, and we're going to have a pitch run. Rod Dasper coming in to run for Brody. Talking to Al Weiss. You'll recall that it was Al Weiss who delivered the winning RBI in Sunday's game for the New York Mets, the two to one contest. Now he's the number eight man in the order. First base is open, nobody out, and pitcher Tom Seaver scheduled up next. So let's see what kind of a move that the Orioles make. The acting manager is Billy Hunter. In the third inning, manager Earl Weaver was ejected by umpire Shaq Roberts. They're going to put him on this time. Weiss is being intentionally walked. See if Gil Hodges makes a move here. Gil might very well leave Seaver in there and let him go to the sacrifice. Or he might go to the pinch hitter. He has Doug McGraw throwing in the bullpen. We'll know in just a moment. There's a lob throw down to second in an attempt to get Gaspar wandering off the bag. So the intentional walk is accomplished. Seaver goes back to the dugout. Gil Hodges standing alongside Rube Walker. It's going to be a pinch hitter coming up, and it's J.C. Martin. He is a left-hand batter who, in the championship series in Atlanta, 
delivered a pinch base hit to drove in two runs. Now here comes George Bamberger to the mound. The guess is that the Orioles will go to their left-hander Pete Rickard. Your attention, please. Martin will bat for Seaver. For New York, batting for Seaver, number nine. Bamberger. J.C. Who still makes his home, by the way, uh, Scott Nyland here in New York. Talking it over. There's Rickard looking in. Jim Harden's the right-hander. Rickard's the left-hander. He's saying, do you want me? No sign yet. Bamberg is still there. And now Bamberg turns and starts back toward the dugout. Now it goes back to the mound. Now the sign is going to the bullpen from the umpire down the left field line, Frank Sikora, and it's Pete Rickard coming in to do the pitching. There's a break in the action here at New York. And in the bottom half of the 10th inning, the score is the Mets won and Baltimore won. Ambassador Tony Kubek. Down here with me in the commissioner's box, Chief Justice Earl Warren. And sir, I saw you keeping score here. I know you're a real ball fan. Well, I have been all my life. I think I was a great ball fan because I never was a great ball player. Well, I saw you before and I said to your right hand man, did the Chief Justice get that pinch runner and you beat me to the draw? <laughs> you had Gasper in the ball game before I did. Gasper was in there, yeah. And I this is quite an exciting series, isn't it, sir? I, I, I think it, this may be the end of it with Gasper over the plate, too. You think so? I you think sound so. like a Mets fan. I am. I am. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Chief Justice Earl Warren, now let's go back upstairs. All right, Tony, it is Pete Rickard now, the left-hander, who is coming here to work to J.C. Martin. Rickard won seven, lost four, and an average of 2.21 in the regular season. So all the drama of World Series play, and this has been a dramatic World Series. has come down to this year in the bottom half of the 10th inning in this fourth game. As J.C. Martin comes up here now, he batted 209 during the regular season, and he had three home runs. But he doesn't think anybody there still remembers him. Runners at first and second, nobody out. Tommy A.G. on deck. He squares to bunt. Bunts the ball, a good one. It's taken now by Rickett, throws to first, and hit him in the back. Here comes the winning run. The ball is in play. The Mets win the ball game. The Mets win the ball game by a score of two to one. As the throw hit Martin in the back, it was in play off in short right field. And pitch runner Gaspar scored from second. And the New York Mets won it in the bottom half of the 10th inning. Nancy Seaver getting congratulations all around. Her husband Tom gets credit for the victory. J.C. Martin in the midst of that. Pitcher Rickard, both going for the ball. Rickard finally picked it up. He fired at Dave Johnson. And watch this now. Watch this. I don't know where you can see the velocity in this throw. A very tough throw to handle. Fired in hard to David Johnson. And the ball caroms away from his glove. And is rolling out now toward the right side of the infield. And then scampering across the plate here comes Rod Gasper with a winning run. And the Mets have done it again. A sensational catch by Swoboda saved them in the top of the ninth. The Orioles have battled back 
to tie it. Swoboda made a diving grab off the bat of Brooks Robinson that could have gone through to the wall to score two runs. That's been scored as an error by Pete Rickard, by the way. And so the Mets win it two to one and now have a commanding three game to one lead. All right now, let's quickly go down to Tony Kubek. With me on the field, today's winning pitcher in a heck of a ball game, Tom Seaver. This must be the most exciting moment in your life. It is. It has to be, Tony. It's the greatest. Uh, I've wanted this for I don't know how long. I guess maybe nine years old. But it's this is the beautiful, most beautiful ball club I've ever seen. They're just fabulous. It's a pleasure to play with them. It really is. Tom, I talked to your wife before the ball game, and she was so darn nervous. And she said, I know Tom is, and I'm right out there with him. She's yeah, a great I gal. I think she gets more nervous than I do. She's a great bit of encouragement for me. You pitched a good ball game. It looked like you got stronger about the sixth inning. I did. I got a kind of a second win. and. Uh, Made the couple bad pitches in the ninth inning, gave up a run, but this club just never stops fighting. You think we're going back to Baltimore? I don't want to, Tony. I hope not. <laughs> Tom Seaver, thank you so much. Congratulations on your first you. series victory. Thank you. Hope thank there'll you. be many more. There's some more too. Thanks, thank Tony. you so much. Let's go on back upstairs. So the winning pitcher in this game is Seaver. The losing pitcher is Dick Hall. Brody doubled. To, he was replaced by Gasper, the pinch runner, who came in to score the winning run. It was two runs, ten hits, one error for the Mets in ten innings. Baltimore, one run, six hits, one error. Thanks to Alan Roth and Jim.